For those druids or Celtic practitioners looking to add oomph and more mystique to their magical practices, Christopher Hughes' Celtic Magic is an excellent resource book. Welcome back, saplings, to Esoteric Moments. Today, the book review I'm doing is Celtic Magic by Christopher Hughes. The subtitle to this is Transformative Teachings from the Cauldron of Awen, and that couldn't be more appropriate. Readers are really going to get a lot of inspiration from this book and practical how-tos. I really appreciate Christopher Hughes's writing style. His voice is very easy to understand and inspires the reader profoundly. This book uses references to myth and folklore to find the symbols and power that make magic actually work for people. Much of the first half of the book deals with all the different gods, goddesses, spirit guides, other deities that you can incorporate to bring more power to your practices. It also allows you to tap into that foundational root in Celtic magic. Other sections include, of course, the Oum or the Celtic tree alphabet and divination with plants and healing with plants. At the end, there's even a section on Celtic bone oracles, which I thought was really fascinating and included a lot of new information for me. Really, the book covers a huge amount and it's packed into a really easy to read and informative book. You are going to have so much fun reading this book and feel wiser after finishing the last page. Each chapter will have a different exercise, meditation, or spellcraft. I wish these would have been a little more clearly defined in each chapter. Sometimes it just kind of came upon the reader and broke the flow of reading for me. But the practices are useful. Some of them are new, some of them are kind of traditional druid practices. I ended up uh, dog-earing a lot of these pages and different exercises because I want to revisit them a second, third, fourth time. I think so far this has been my favorite book that deals with magic specifically. So it definitely has a druid slant and a Celtic slant to it. In some ways it could be used for those who are new to the practice of druidry. But really, I think it's more geared towards the intermediate who has a solid practice happening in their lives, but is looking for more magic and looking for new ways to change their lives and the world around them. I really wish, though, that the book ended with more of a final thoughts. It's just kind of all this information and it's great and you're loving it. And then you reach the last page and there's no like wrap up, which I guess is good because it means that you're more likely to go back and enjoy the things that you've marked for more research or more practical doing. But it would have been nice to say goodbye to the author a little. <laughs> for the intermediate druid looking for more magic, this is an excellent choice in reference books. And I think I'm actually gonna keep it on my shelf for many years to come. Before I get on to the sapling shout out, I just want to read this really short, simple, sweet quote from the book that I think wraps up the author's approach to all of this magic and all of this information really well. The essential qualities required for effective magical practice, humility, skill, and knowledge. After reading this book, you will have all three of those in spades. Today's sapling shout out goes out to Ginny Shilliday, which I hope I said right, and I want to say thank you for correcting my pronunciation on comments and always being willing to, you know, debate and, and actually go into conversation. It's wonderful to have you in the comment section. If you want to be the next sapling shout out in the comments below, tell me about your favorite spell that you found in a book. Not one that you made or was taught to you by another teacher, but something you found in a book. I'm very curious about the spells you're reading about. Thanks for watching, and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove. <laughs>